G'day, I'm Ash, and this is the T-34E, and while Operation Summer has actually not delivered any interesting aircraft, this is what this video is going to be about. While it's interesting to have the IS-7 and the T-34E, there hasn't been any development, or so we know, in terms of what they're going to have for the aircraft event. Now, we do know that they're going to have an aircraft event, because they said so after everyone complained about not having an aircraft. But will it be uh, giving access to some certain vehicles that people have wanted for a long time, like the LA-174, or maybe even this little bugger, the HG-51 uh, Hydro? And as an aviation fanboy, and absolutely avid about aviation and just fantasized by flight, for me, when they introduced Operation Summer this year, particularly with the IS-7 and the T-34E, I wasn't particularly intrigued or very excited for the vehicles, because at the same time while tanks are sort of developing, the last aircraft event that we had was for this thing. This is the Whirlwind P-9. It's an okay aircraft. There was another aircraft as well, the Tandem Mai, but I don't think that thing is particularly fun. It's more a collector's item and uh, should be left in its cage. The only time that there has been an independent vehicle that has been released as a part of a summer event was back in early 2013, 2014. If I remember correctly, it was for the A26 now, you're going to see it. I, I feature this thing on the channel quite frequently. In fact, it's similar to uh, another A26 that you can get in uh, the regular tech tree, except it has a glass uh, front. This thing. It was one of a few vehicles that Galgen have done as aircraft events independently, but I'm thinking, hang on, what are they going to do? What are they going to possibly show us for Operation Summer for part stages 3 and 4? They may as well call it stages 3 and 4 because stage 1 and 2 is for tanks. So today we're going to take a look at some interesting vehicles, some particularly popular with the community uh, and within pop culture. We're going to take a look at some vehicles that I think that they should have. So let's get straight into it. But let me just say this first. Now, they could initially just release something uh, that we've already seen, whether that be the DB7, the 109E7, you know, various other aircraft that we've seen before. So do keep in mind that they could just uh, as cheap it out and put something up that's tier 1 and, and something that's tier 4, or easy peasy. Who knows, they could bring out something particularly interesting. Maybe this aircraft. This is the Vought XF5U, also known as the Flying Flapjack. Now, what's interesting about this aircraft is its weird angular design. And when I say angular, I mean it's just a flying wing. It's interesting for several reasons, and one of them is its characteristic of flight. Now, despite it being a flying disc with engines attached, it actually had an incredibly low stall speed. It had great engine performance, and, well, the rudder authority slash elevator authority was kind of lackluster, but general flight characteristics were pretty damn okay. And as you can see by the screenshots that were just shown on screen, it is a user model in War Thunder, which indicates the following, that it could be present in uh, an event vehicle uh, as such, so we could see this in the near future. Um, and also they have featured War Thunder themselves for the, the episodes that they do on their own YouTube channel. They featured this aircraft in the background as a part of their April Fool's uh, series of videos. So again, it's highly likely that we may see this at some point this year or next. Now with this one, I'm going to be a little bit biased. This is the CA-15 Kangaroo. It's basically a beefed up P-51 mixed with a Martin Baker, except the Martin Baker was turboprop. So you can see the similar resemblance, there it is against the Wiraway, and essentially Australia was looking for an airframe that could go uh, extremely faster, because remember the Boomerang was quite slow of an aircraft for the most powerful engine that Australia had, and I think that this will be a cool addition at a rank 4 possibly, um, it had four 20mm cannons and uh, you know various other modifications, including a two-stage supercharger and various other engine changes, but what ended up by happening is on its first and final flight, it ended up by crashing. One of the hydraulic uh, lines actually failed. But in 1946, the 
the prototype was deemed like a beefed up uh, P51H almost in levels of performance. So it'd be interesting to see, considering there already is a Wiraway and the Boomerangs in game, another Australian vehicle at rank 4. And uh, speaking of Australian vehicles, of course I'm a little bit biased here, but hear me out. Britain doesn't really have an exclusive high tier vehicle. Granted, so doesn't the America, so doesn't Japan and Italy and France. But Germany and Russia do, and they've got the 262A2A, and then they have, uh, the Russians have got the LA-174. And I was thinking in this, some kind of lines along the line of like, in, in the rarity of IS-7, Maybe they should uh, add the CAC Saber. Now, for those of you who don't know what the CAC Saber is, it's a, a redesigned American Saber that only had 40% of the original F86 um, E slash F uh, fuselage, and it had a completely redesigned R fuselage to incorporate the Avon engine, the same engine that is in the Hunter. On top of this, we also slapped two 30 mils in there, and it could carry, um, you know, a reasonable amount of armament, and basically could carry half the load of an 84. So that's another big fuck you. So on top of that, we had impressive armament, we had impressive carrying capability, it was lighter, it was faster, and, you know, do we need to go on any more? Gaussian, please, I'm begging you. Now the next aircraft will be considerably interesting, and that is the A-10 Thunderbolt 2, also known as BERT. And I don't really have much to say about the A-10, apart from the fact that it has a 30mm Rotary Avenger cannon, and it's just... the sound of that going off nearby is... is... wowzers. The intent was to improve over the AD-1 uh, Sky Raider and the AD-2 Sky Raider, but lesser its firepower so that had more maneuverability and could do lighter strikes and more precision targets, etc, etc. Now we know this vehicle is coming to War Thunder, but we don't know when. Will it be the introduction of Tier 6 vehicles, or whatever? Whatever it's going to be introduced as, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a limited event vehicle, or it's going to be one of the first Tier 6s that we'll see as an aircraft. Regardless, who doesn't want to BERT everywhere? Combining with its top speed and, you know, decent maneuverability, it kind of has been the mainstay for uh, close air support within the US Air Force. And, well, it's almost, you know, being run out of service. So it's a fucking decent aircraft, to say the least. Now, I couldn't have a video without mentioning the Blomenvoss 138, also known as the Sea Dragon, and this was Germany's long-range reconnaissance uh, aircraft. Basically served as a mine sweeping and various other bits and pieces, and it had two enclosed turrets with MG151 autocannons, and, you know, it was pretty successful at what it did. They built 297 of the vehicles between 1938 and 1943, and none of them exist today. They were used in minesweeping operations and could hold up to 650 kilogram bombs or 450 kilogram bombs. So again, a nice relatively low tier vehicle that could be a tier one um, and generally would have a bunch of fun, particularly because it is a float plane and there is a lack of float planes and seaplanes in this game. And uh, yeah, I think it'd be absolutely fantastic because it reminds me of a beefed up Focke-Wulf 189. Now again, I could talk in length about certain other vehicles, for instance the Ki-78, a high altitude uh, interceptor with a 20mm cannon, or I could talk about the Hawker Fury 1 with a Sabre power plant, or I probably could talk about the Republic P-47, uh, also known as the XP-72 Super Thunderbolt, or I could probably talk about uh, the Caproni Capini, I butchered that completely, as more interesting vehicles to talk about as well. But I thought they were kind of cool and they deserve their own uh, little mention in this video. Now keep in mind that there may not actually be an aircraft event and we're going to have to wait and see what comes out at Gamescom this year which is in about a week. So uh, yeah, what do you, would you think they would add for an event vehicle? Let me know in the comments down below. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching. My name's Ash, thank you very much for the patrons, for supporting the show, and I'll catch you in the next one.